Hey everyone, welcome back to another video, it's the Somewhat Tutor and in today's video we're going to be looking at something different and that's beam theory. So that's structures or statics and what I've got here at the moment is a question. So we've got a beam which is simply supported that's of length L, so A points A and B, it's fixed. We've got a vertical load of magnitude P at position X from the left hand support determine the support reactions at points A and B. So in this video this can be a fairly simple example and as we go through the next few videos I'm going to be adding a bit more to the complexity. So how do we actually start this? Well the most important thing is always to understand what do these supports actually mean. So we've got a pin support and we've got a roller support and what I've done is added a little key on the right hand side so with a pin support you've got two reaction forces so that's a vertical force and a horizontal force the reason why it's pinned and we have two reaction forces is because there's no movement vertically or horizontally so we've got the opposite and, and equal reactions in those two directions whereas a roller and if you imagine from the diagram it's able to move horizontally therefore it's got to be fixed only in the vertical directions hence why it's got a vertical reaction force um, and what I've done here is uh, added my you know my sort of style of reaction forces so I've got H always going to the right and vertical forces always going from the ground upwards um, so I've got a positive up and a positive to the right and also if we've got any moment going clockwise is positive so in this example, we're going to be interested in the two reactions at A and B. So if we start with a free body diagram, which is the most important thing, we can redraw this as looking something like this. So we've got two forces at A, which is the vertical force. So let's just draw an arrow going up and another arrow going horizontally. So let's label this vertical force at A and horizontal force at A. We know we've got a, a roller support at B, therefore we've got a vertical force at B. So we're going to label this B, VB. And we know we've got the magnitude of P at point X. So let's just say it's somewhere around here. And again, we'll just draw some some distances. So we've got from the start to point P, that's length X. And then the rest is going to be the entire beam minus the X, which is L minus X. So with a free body diagram, what we want to do is determine the reaction forces VA, VB and HA. So how we do this as it's in a stationary position, we can say that the sum of forces in the positive direction going up and the positive forces to the right is equal to zero. So what that means is it looks something like this. So the sum of all the forces going vertically up, again positive up, is equal to zero. So what does that look like from this? We've got VA going up, we've got VB going up, and we've got P coming down. So therefore, we can write this as VA plus VB minus P as it's going down, and we've labelled going upwards as positive, must all equal zero. So therefore, we can't really do much more than this from this point because we've got two unknowns and only one equation. So therefore we must try another which is going to be the sum of the forces to the right positive is equal to zero. So what that looks like is well if we've only got one force which is HA going to the right so we can say positive HA is equal to zero because we've got nothing else going to the left or going to the right so therefore HA is zero 
and that makes sense because it's stationary and it's fixed. So there's nothing going in the opposite direction, so therefore HA must be zero. Well, what do we do from here? We have to determine A and B, but we've only got one equation, so we must get another equation since we've got two unknowns. Well, what we can do is take moments about any point. But when taking moments, it's always best to take moments where the forces, where you've got multiple forces. And the reason being because once you get your perpendicular distance from the pivot point, that being zero allows us to cancel out. So as we've got the most forces at point A, we can take moments at that particular point. So we can say the summation of moments about point A, again, clockwise, going positive, is equal to zero. So as moments equal force times distance, the distance at point A for, for VA and HA are zero, therefore they cancel out, but we've also deduced that HA is equal to zero. So therefore we've only got a vertical force VA. But we've got two other forces in play, which is P and Q, and they've got a perpendicular distance to point A. So we've got point P, which is a distance of X, and vertical force, or VB, a distance of L, which is the entire length of the beam as given in the question here. So therefore, we can say that, and again, this is going clockwise, so we've got P, which if you imagine P, which is going downwards and to the right, so to the left, that's going to be a positive moment. So we can say P multiplied by its distance, which is X, minus VB, as we've got it going, VB would be going straight up, times the entire distance of L, and then back down and around. So that is going counterclockwise. So that must be a negative VB multiply by its distance L is equal to zero. And therefore we want to rearrange to get VB as the subject of the equation. So we can say VB is equal to PX divided by L. So I've moved PX to the opposite side, multiplied it by minus one as we had a negative VB and divided it by L to get VB isolated. So that can just be and then what we can do is substitute VB back into this equation to say, sorry, to get VA. So therefore, VA from that equation equals, so plus P on the other side and minus VB, which is P minus P X over L. And then we can do simple factorizing, which is common bracket of common variable of p minus 1, sorry, minus x over l. And that's your vertical forces of VA, VB, and HA. So welcome back to another question. This time we've got a cantilever beam AB, which is supported by a built-in support at point A. The beam has a vertical downward UDL, which is a uniformly distributed load of magnitude P per unit length across its entire length, which is L. Find the reaction forces at point A. So quickly, discussing our key on the right hand side, we've got a moment. Therefore, what I've not, inc what I've not included here is the vertical and horizontal forces. So a moment, or sorry, I should mention a, a built-in support uh, such as a cantilever has three types of reaction forces. So you've got the horizontal force, you've got the vertical force, and you've also got a moment. So in this key, we have to take all three, which is at point A. So first of all, let's start by drawing the free body diagram and adding those forces in. So our free body diagram is going to look something like this. We've got a horizontal force of HA at point A. We've got VA, and this time, as it's a moment, sorry, as it's a, a, a cantilever, we've got a moment of going clockwise 
MA. But we've also got a force or a UDL of P per unit length. Now we must get the full total magnitude of P, which in this case is going to be the per unit length multiplied by the L. And as it's uniformly distributed, we can say it concentrates at the middle point. So we can say, in a sense, that P will act right down the middle, but we must get the full force of P. So if we look at another example with just purely with numbers, and hopefully this will make a little bit more sense. So if, say, we've got a UDL of 5 kilonewtons per metre, and this entire beam is length of 10 meters. If I said to you what is the total magnitude acting on the beam, we know we've got 5 kilonewtons per meter, so at meter 1 there's 5 kilonewtons, at meter 2 there's another 5, at 3 there's another 5, at 4 there is another 5, and so on. Therefore what we can say is the, the UDL, which is 5 kilonewtons per meter, we can times it by the length the total length which is 10 and that's a total force of 50 kilo newtons which would act centrally down the middle that would be 50 kilo newtons so in this case we've got p so we have to multiply by its entire length l and that's going to be the concentrated force acting down the middle of the beam and again what we do to find those reaction forces is just do what we've done in the previous example. So we look at all the forces going, in this case, upwards. We must say we've got a positive VA minus the PL as it's going downwards must equal to zero. Therefore, rearrange it to the other side. We've got VA is equal to positive PL. Now, we can do the same thing by looking of resolving at the forces going to the right again because it's all stable and not moving we can say that the force is equal to zero and therefore we've got only a positive ha going to the right and therefore ha is equal to zero as there's nothing else reacting with it and lastly to get the final unknown which is the magnitude of ma we must take moments and again, we can take this anywhere we want. So that's the summation of moments, but I'm going to do it about point A as we've got the most forces and most of them can be taken to zero because it's at that point. So clockwise going positive. What we must do as we're resolving for MA and we know it's acting about this built in support, we must not neglect it. So MA going positive, we have to include that MA we know that HA and VA act at point A, so the perpendicular distance is zero, therefore the moment will be zero, but we've only got PL left. So that's going, PL is acting downwards and going to the left and going back and around. So that is clockwise. So we can say that M PL is a positive. So we've got PL, which is a force, and then the distance as it's acting down the middle that distance here is L over 2. So we've got PL times the distance L over 2 is equal to 0. Therefore, we can say that MA is equal to PL squared over 2. And we take, since we've taken it across the other side, it's a negative. So it's negative PL squared over 2. So hopefully that's made a lot of sense. Um, what I'll do is add a few more complex examples as we go down the line. If you've enjoyed the video, please give it a like. Please consider subscribing and helping me to 100 subscribers. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.